So you might be thinking, dude, Jeff, um, you're not super athletic, and that's just a short beard. What are you talking about? And what I really want to do is talk about how when you start looking into grooming and like really, really starting to understand and becoming more and more educated in something, you'll realize that all those little things end up becoming more than the sum of its parts and really shift something because of all of these little things. And then it's something completely different. And I've gotten to this point where I've taken all of these little things I've tried throughout the years, like I think it's been five years now, and I've come up with this particular styling, and it really reminds me a lot of an athletic build. So let's talk about the characteristics. So the characteristics of this beard style are so similar to an athletic build, such as, you know, broad shoulders, or there's a pumped up chest, a wide back, very slim waist, they're very strong, very functional. Also, you know, an athletic build isn't built overnight. Like you can trim down, you can lose weight, you can pump up, but really to get a good, like nice physique, it takes time. And, uh, you know, there's gonna be refining things. And uh, it's it's very similar to a bodybuilding, uh, not like a huge bodybuilder, but like just very trim, more of like CrossFit type, uh, all around uh, body. And that's why I'm calling it an athletic beard. So what exactly is an athletic beard comes down to three things. Number one, the shape of the beard. Number two, your genetics, that plays an important role into everything. And number three, how long you've been growing. So now, unfortunately, not everybody can get an athletic beard exactly how they want it due to genetics. And just like in bodybuilding, you know, you may be a, a hard gainer or you might be shorter or taller and, you know, you might have like genetically broader shoulders or smaller waist or hips or something. There, these things come into play when you are creating and building your body. Same with the, the beard and your face and your body fat percent, your chin, your lip, your hair growth, of course. All of these things come into play. Uh, but let's say we're willing to try this out. It's kind of a hard beard to get to. So let's break down the specifics of this. When I trimmed the sides here, it's the same as the underneath, and that's very, very short. I can barely grab it. I can barely grab underneath. It's like, like just a little bit of hair. It's really not a lot at all. Like it's almost gone. So that's my starting point. That's my foundation. And I went all the way up until the mustache, and I went all the way down to the jaw, and then up to the jaw here. And here's an important part is when I did the jaw, I did not go over it with everything similar to the minimalist beard. I left it long and I kept that as a ratio of two to one. So the jaw area is about two, sides and the bottom are about one. The bottom might be just a hair longer, but for the most part, it's two to one. And moving along, then we get to the chin area and my chin and my face is a lot more round. I want to give it a lot, lot stronger look. Again, it's like bodybuilding. Like I want to shape it this specific way with my genetics in mind. You might already have a strong jaw, so you might be a little different. But for me, I went four to one. So the sides is about one and the chin is about four times that. So it's really, really long. So moving on, then we have the mustache and that is about two thirds of the chin length. Um, and this is the first time I've trimmed my mustache in a very, very long time. And you know, that's kind of what I needed to do to give everything the proportions I wanted. Sometimes you might build up some muscles and then you're like, oh, this is weird. My biceps are huge. I got to trim those down just to make it look right with my shoulders or something like that. Same thing, I had to trim that down. And then I had to take it one step further because I had the little tails, the uh, the handlebars of the mustache. And I thought those were a little long, or they were very long. So I, I trimmed those down to the desired length. I might even go a little shorter. But then working from the outside of the handlebars, a uh, little tail there, to the center of my lip, I, I had a linear fall off. So I pushed down the lip until it hit the center of my lips. 
Uh, not, never ever have I ever and won't ever trim right up to the top of the lip. This falls right to the center of the lips. So like when I close my mouth, it's right on. It's like I'm just biting it. And then what I did is I took a linear fall off to the length that I desired of the outside. And then I trimmed that just like that. Once everything was like trimmed up like that, then I could start going in with the scissors and just making little tweaks and little fades on the sides, cleaning up the underneath. Sometimes the corners here were just a little weird. It's a little kind of a, it's like a bonsai tree. You kind of just do this little thing here and this there, and you want to be careful not to do it too much because you can totally screw it up. So you got to trim a little bit, back off, come back a little bit later, and you'd be like, oh, that's perfect just the way it is. Leave it, let it rest. You know, this is like something that you kind of like, it's like this fun little tweaking thing. And, you know, I'm really super into this beard style. I really like it. I think it looks really good. It's very complimentary to me. It's very nice and light and easy going. Um, it looks good with kind of all styles, I think. Similar to like when you have a good body, it makes all your clothing look good. There's just all of these things that just are so great about this beard style for me that I just, I just, I'm super excited about it. So I wanted to share that because you can try it. So as far as the time element goes, different parts of the face grow at different speeds, which is why you can't just jump into this beard, even though it's really short, looks like you could get it in like a couple months, maybe three. Uh, it's actually not gonna, it's probably gonna take you about six months if you wanted, maybe even eight, depending. Uh, you know, yours could be faster or shorter than mine, but I've done a breakdown here of my personal growth speed so you can kind of get uh, an understanding of how it might take you a while to get to something like this. From shaven to stubble, it's about two weeks. And then from stubble to say an even beard, it takes me about four more weeks and then possibly six. So that's basically just coverage everywhere. And I start losing the holes. It starts getting covered up by the surrounding hairs. Um, and then from that even beard to say a long beard at the point where I'm like, okay, cool. I have my beard back. That's about another six weeks. So that's a good foundation. This is the starting point. You haven't really accomplished much here from the long beard to the long chin, usually what comes next. And that's about another four weeks, maybe even six or seven. And that's to get this really long chin hair. So it's just so slow growing. Like seriously, it takes months and you know, I'm just estimating here, but for sure after that, that's about like, I don't know, five months right there just to get the chin. My mustache is still growing. It's strong at this point, but it might not be there. So you have another four weeks there, um, probably just to, to really get it to its terminal length. And then um, I have this chin section here and that can take months more to really grow in up there on the top because I'm personally just not a fan of getting rid of that. This time, which is super rare, I cleaned up along it, but I did not remove it. I did not slash uh, that jaw, that chin part away. I just, I kept it. I mean, I, I earned that so hard. Like, like that took me maybe like eight months to just grow this nice like little bump up there just right under that cheekbone. I really like that defining like top part right there. And, uh, you know, that's a few months. That's a long time. It, unfortunately, there's not much you can do except for go through the journey and have all of these beards and different styles along the way. And if uh, you're like me, you're just kind of keep changing everything. You might end up changing to this type kind of beard or keep this in mind because it's really nice in my opinion. So lastly, I'm thinking about like, what do you do if you don't have my genetics and you're looking for something like this and say you, for example, you can't grow a very strong mustache. So you can still do this. You just have to get the proportions right. So my proportions that I've laid out of two to three, like that should work for you. Like, you know, like you grow, let's say you can only grow it so long you grow it to that length and you go, okay, my mustache only grows this long. So let's grow the chin this long. Let's let's try to get that one third longer than this. And then same with the sides. You might keep that at one to two or whatever's like particular to your face. 
the idea is not the hair itself it's about the shape so the shape of this beard is just it just looks a certain way it's very strong it's very bulky and tight and if you have a big chin you won't need that ratio of the two to three or whatever it is you would you could have it evenly uh even amount same with the jawline. If you have a really strong jaw, then you can keep that all at one, you know? And, and these are the things that really make a good beard. And the whole idea is it's custom. It's not necessarily like my beard, you know? Like it's, it's just a way to think about how you structure your beard. So I hope that helps. And uh, until next time, peace. And now that you've made it to the end of the video, be sure to treat yourself with some awesome beard brand products over at the shop here. And if you're not already a subscriber, please do that and enjoy the videos. Till next time, beard on.